for your customs, for your off-roading stuff, for your long-distance travel and electrical needs, for just checking out the bits and bobs of other people's gear. If you want to see it, and it's modified, from Atura's to Tough Trucks, we've got them all here. The Mud Ducks 4 Drive Touring, as we like to call it, Toys. Look at this thing. G'day everybody, Steve from Arducks 4 Wheel Drive Touring with another episode of Toys. We haven't seen these for a while because nobody likes me enough to give me their trucks. If you've got a truck you'd like me to video, get in touch with me. Anyway, we'll get onto this. This, as far as I know, is a 2013 BT50, but why am I telling you about it? We'll get the owner in. Can't say hello, Greg. Thanks, Steve. Hey, mate, yeah. how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. All right, great. Well, we'll get straight into it. Uh, we might as well start with the bars and lights, and we'll work our way around. So what have we got, mate? Uh, the ARB bull bar. It came standard on the truck when I picked it up. Um, I got the vehicle at the end of 2017. Um, yeah, so I've started adding on it. Put the Ridge Rider winch on, 12,000 pound winch. Um, and then that, these have only just been a recent addition. The, Nine inch Osrams from Kings, I just went with a cheaper option. Um, yeah, just to see if I was going to like them or not. No, and do you do yeah. it? You don't do a lot of night driving, do nah, you? No, not a lot. Yeah. So I couldn't justify you know, spending heaps of money on, on driving lights. Yeah, you've got the, um, the flashy yeah. number plate lifter. I've got one of them. Use, uh, oh, what have you got there? The Factor 55 thimble, um, just oh. with soft shackles. Awesome. Just makes it a closed system. Yeah, that's pretty good. How many pounds is the winch again? Uh, 12,000. 12,000? Yep. Bigger than mine! Mainly... I've got a 200 series. Yeah, mainly because with the camper on, uh, if we go into a free camp and we get stuck, Yep. Yeah, you know, I've got the capacity to pull us out. Nice. So. Okay, well it's pretty... Yep. Uh, um, no bash plates or anything, just the standard ones? No, nah, just standard bash plates. Um, I've put recovery points on, some rated recovery points. They're rated at five, uh, five tonne each. Okay, well, who, who makes those? Um, Rock Armour. Rock Armour. Yeah, that's at uh, four drive mega. Oh, yeah, the guys down in Sydney. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did they fit without any modifications? No, they went straight on. Good. So yes. I had the bull bar off, I put the winch on, and then yeah. I fitted them straight away. Yeah, they're the Ranger um, BT 51s. Awesome. So, yeah. Okay, and your little factory ARB foggies, I'm guessing? Yep, yep. Are they any good? Um, yeah. Really? Yeah, they, yeah, they go all right. Oh, okay. So, mine were crap, just saying. Yeah. Uh, I'll, we'll go around the driver's side, I think. So, what have we got coming up over here? Um, the Safari Snorkel, I had that fitted at the end of last year. Um, did a bit of homework. Make a difference? Yeah, yeah, absolutely love it. Did a bit of homework, looked at the TJM Snorkel, looked at the Safari Snorkel. I just like the, the fact that the ram could turn around. Yeah, that's um, handy. Had that fitted by ARB. Yep. Um, the roller roof racks, I got them pretty early in the piece, just so I could put the awning on and yes. and carry the gazebo and tent and so on. Still running your factory steps? Yeah, at, at this point in time, until they bend. I was going to say, you haven't bent them yet. Are you <laughs> having a go? Uh, <laughs> um, the suspension under it, that's... Um, yep. The coils and the leaf springs are TJM XGS 4000. Okay, yeah, TJM. Um, and I, I had trouble getting the shocks on, then they're putting Lovell shocks in. So oh. um, the Lovells have been pretty good yeah. so far. Yeah, Lovell's a good shot. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a good to deal with. Cooper ST Maxis. I think I've seen tyres like this. Yeah, I forget, I forget who gave me the advice to get those. <laughs> Some idiot, no doubt. <laughs> 265, yeah, they're just 65, 17. So it's about 31. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know a great deal about tyres. When I put them on, I probably should have went with 30, 33 or threes. Yeah, oh. but next, next time. Yeah, next yeah. time. Yeah. Right, I've got the standard tow bar, and um, that's just the hitch, the Oz hitch from the camper. And uh, 
Whose canopy? Uh, BGR. Uh -huh. BGR canopies. Um, BGR, so that'd be a, probably a factory canopy there. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're from Sydney. Come around this way, Biff. Uh, <laughs> just recently whacked these on. Have you seen these before? Hammer locks. Oh, yeah, I've seen those on my yeah. truck driving days. Just make it a lot easier to hook up. Yeah. So, 12 pin plug. You, would you rather the 12 pin plug or do you think maybe an Anderson later or it was on quite happy with that? It was on there when I, when I started, uh, when I first got it. So now I um, just run a little extension lead from inside the back of my tub out to the trailer. Oh, yeah. And that keeps me all charged up when I'm, when I'm travelling. Okay. So it works quite well. And I'll think of a different Anderson plug later on or? Probably will. I'll probably go from the start battery. Yeah. So I get direct, yeah. direct you charge. You do VCDC? Yeah. It, um, yeah, it's outside wise, it's I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, oh. So, we got we awning wise, what have we got here? Just a the king's it's one? It's just a king's awning, but um, the straight out ordinary one? Yep, um, the, the secret to it is just making sure it's anchored properly. You know, everyone's busting awnings and stuff like that, but if you anchor it properly, you, you really don't have a problem with it. Yeah, yeah, that's fair so, enough, too. Once again, it's a, it's a thing that I probably don't use that often, but it does the job. That's all you need. Yeah. Alright mate, in the engine bay time, anything special we should know about in here? Is it all pretty... Nah, it's all pretty stock standard. It's all pretty shiny. Jesus. Yeah, had a bit of a clean up. Yeah. Bunch of relays down here, what, if, what do they all do? I'm not sure, they run it, they run it when, I, when I've got the vehicle. Yeah. So one of them looks like a spotlight one. But the only one, the only thing I've had trouble with so far, I did a nickel hose last right. year. So that's the only, that's the only thing I've had replaced in the engine so far. Way shinier than mine. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, must, you must actually look after your gear, mate. I like the, um, I like, actually like the five-cylinder engines. Oh, you should mention that. That's a yeah, three-point-two liter. Yeah, three-point-two liter. Um, yeah, it's just got heaps of power. Yeah. You know, you get point. Uh, you, oh, you've got a throttle controller, haven't you? Yeah, I've got the throttle controller. I've got what this kind is, is that? The iDrive. iDrive? Yeah. Yep. And it's the six speed auto. Alright, we'll see that when we get inside. Yeah, pretty that is. It's way too tidy. Place with too much time on his hands, can Might never look that nice. Recovery points up. I um, painted the tops of them black so they didn't look as huge. Oh, yeah. Let's go and have a look at the inside. Yeah. Inside wise, um, I use a HEMA HX1. Yeah, are they good? Yeah, I'm thinking of getting one. So. Yeah. Uh, I learn stuff while we do this stuff, guys. It's got its own um, drive mode, which yeah, is your normal GPS. And then I can hotspot it through my phone to um, upload my navigation maps. Okay. So, it, so if you go to Barrington, it'll actually show you where all the lookouts are and um, camp spots. So that yeah, if you're up there, you don't miss things. So it's, uh, it's quite good. It's quite good to work with. Um, you can save all your waypoints on it, which is good. Nice. So, what else we got in here? No radio the, gear yet. The iDrive, the iDrive's over this side, so it's um, just there so I can see it and work with it. How do you find good. that good? I love it. it um, I drive, drive it in uh, Ultimate 4. Right. Um, it works well with the auto. So, um, the seat covers I use are from the wet seat company. Oh, yes. Uh, they're really good because you can actually slide in and out. So, funnily enough, I use the same ones. Yeah. yeah. No. So that's. So that's what else have we got in here, mate? You got your your yeah. handheld. A little old. That's an old one. It's an oldie bit of goodie. Probably better than mine, to be honest. Uh, well, you need in. Yep. And you got. You were telling me earlier you got plans to put a, a, a actual proper UHF in here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get a. Uh, a GME XRS 370. Oh yeah, like um, I've got. Yep, same as yours. Get it mounted and uh, 
use the dual antenna system like the short one for around town and the yep. longer one for the big trips so yeah just so we've got better communication okay so otherwise what do you got just got the brake controller for the van yeah that was uh that was on here when i bought it apparently the the company that owned it uh from scone they used to tow a few horse floats with it so they had the hayman reese okay. sentinel controller put on so yeah so something's come standard with it um i was lucky enough to pick it up it was um it had 89,000 k's on it when i got it and it was a company a country vehicle yep so uh, i didn't hesitate to buy it with those good country k's on it so yeah, it's been it's been a good truck so far oh, the 89 uh, when you bought it what's it yeah. going on now uh 138 138 oh, yeah. nothing nah so yeah have to do a lot more now with the trailer as well so it feels fairly new yeah and dash mat you put that there or is that yeah no i put that there you got to have them in australia i don't i get amazed that people don't have dash mats yeah and being a black vehicle it does get yeah. quite hot so you know i want to sort of try and protect it a bit mm -hmm. so yeah that's all fairly standard yeah 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 so it's mainly the front the seat covers and the mm -hmm. couple little gadgets that I'll somewhere to put a UHF shortly okay yeah. Cool. yeah okay now we're going to the good bits into the canopy let's check this out so I haven't put oh. a draw haven't put a draw system in yet so my fridge currently sits on there um, I bought a Aldi fridge a sterling fridge um, some time ago and I always thought if it dies I'll buy an angle but the damn thing hasn't died yet. It just won't die, eh? So, um, I run SeaTec gear in my car. Um, I bought it from Auto Elec down in Bansdale, Victoria. Oh yeah, I'll pour some stuff off here. So I bought it one piece at a time, and once I had it all together, I made up the boards myself, yeah. um, and then took it down to Gibbo's at Belmont and got them to wire it all in for me. Okay, you didn't want to have a go at it yourself? Or? Nah, nah. So not that brave. The Red Anderson, I just opened the side window and plugged my solar in there, and that keeps the 120 amp hour battery there charged, as well as the the main battery in the front. Yeah. So the smart pass on the bottom actually directs where the where the power is going to. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite good. And over this side here, you've got what there, you got your battery monitor. Yeah, the SeaTech BM1 battery monitor. It gives you all the info. So it's sitting at 105 at the moment. So it's forward strokers cool um, and then that one tells you that it's sitting at 13.6 volts yeah. and there's no amps being drawn at the moment yeah. so we've got the three C plugs and then the USB, USB at the USB. top yeah um, run my fridge out of that one and that one there's a spare about maybe down the track um, a travel buddy or similar yeah. to plug in there what about camp lighting when you when you uh, about, or do you just rely on your trailer for that? No, I've got some um, I've got some 12 volt strip lights, but yeah, I, I probably I don't use it a lot because I've got the lights on the trailer. Yeah, yeah and I sense. use some other portable lights as well, like um, Zempire Dome lights, which oh, yeah, I yeah. can charge via USB during the day. And you get like three days out of those. So, cool. so yeah, so there's plenty of room good. in here, so you can because you haven't got a draw system and stuff. So yeah. I guess what you do, you just pack when you're going on a trip. You just pack boxes and. Yeah, I've got I've got a few things plastic, in there. A few plastic boxes with lids uh, that I pack in. Um, the reason the kick-ass battery I put in the middle, when you fill this up with juice with diesel, you've got 80 litres sitting on one side, so mm -hmm. it sort of tends to sort of lean to one side a little bit. Yeah. I put the battery in the middle to like to offset that weight, and I've left enough room on the on the right hand side of it as well that if my power requirements become greater than I, that I've got, I can actually yep. put another battery in beside it. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, and you probably can't see, in front of that bag there's a 1500 watt inverter All right. sitting there, it's just sitting there temporarily. Um, it works a treat, it runs the boss's hair dryer or straightener, <laughs> um, but I will permanently mount it. So, I had this bench added by Drifter. Um, it's for touring purposes where we can just pull up set the jet boil up on one side and put the cutting board on the other side and make sandwiches or, yeah. or rolls for lunch. Um, yeah, it's quite useful. Even when we travel with the with the trailer, um, now we can just pop the top on the trailer, sleep in it and even make breakfast here before we head off the next morning. Yeah. So it's a good idea. I'll do something like that on mine, so that'll yeah. I might get a drift one. I might make another one like on my other videos. We'll see. Yeah. I do like the one on yours. 
being aluminium because you can actually set hot things on it. Um, yeah, so they're, they're quite good. They're good addition to the vehicle. Well, nice and flat though. And makes it a better workspace, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, now that's all pretty good. I think you're coming. It's a different way of doing it, you know. Lots of people use drawers and stuff, but you don't need drawers and things. You can do it with boxes. It's got a non slippish floor mat in here, so things won't move around. Bags. If you're a bit like us and drifter fans, maybe a shitload of drifter bags. Who knows? But what I'm getting at here, guys, is you don't have to spend a swag of money on drawers. You can build your own stuff, get it to suit yourself, and get out of the bush. This is actually quite elaborate compared to some gear, and it's quite simple compared to others. It's what suits you when you go out four wheel driving and camping. And as you can see, this will cover everything we need all the power requirements you'd ever want, the fridge. Inverter for the wife, as we heard. What more would you want? That will do the job. It gets you out of the bush. Not to mention, as Greg said, he tows a camper, which will be in another video down the track. Um, the main reason, the main reason for the the 12 volt system, we did the Great Ocean Road, and I used a Arc Pack 730, yep. which was mounted here. Um, but it was just a constant daily hassle to make sure it was charging and you know um, it was quite hot as well so the demo the the draw from the fridge was quite high so yeah. I had to have I had to get myself a better system to keep everything running properly so well, you've got it now yeah <laughs> yeah no I love it. Gear's good stuff yeah no, I'm really happy with it so no, awesome that saves you another bit round of the bonnet so yeah, and, the, and there's room, you know, as I say, I can put another battery there beside it where the, where the inverter's sitting at the moment and um, you know, boost me power up to 120 amps of usable power. Yeah. So maybe build a box over all that maybe down the track. Yeah, yeah. So you don't beat the crap out of your gear. Yep. But it's nice, it works well. Yeah, I saved myself some money by making the panels myself. Yeah, yeah, you would. So. Well, I'm a bit lucky, I do all my own electrics. But yep. That's what I do. Okay, well I'm going to endure the sun, Greg is not going to have to endure the sun, he's in the best spot, lucky bugger. I thought I'd uh, have a seat here and just have a quick chat to Greg about what he thinks about the truck. So we'll get right into it Greg, just uh, what are the three best things you like about the BT50 and why? Best three things, um, the 3.2 litre diesel, um, yep. yeah, it just feels like a good strong engine. Um, yeah, tows, tows the trailer without any dramas. So, like on the long trips, I just want something that's going to be nice and strong and reliable. Yep. Um, second thing, my 12 volt power system. Love it. It uh, does everything I need. Uh, even even if we sort of run short on power in the trailer, I can always tap into the tap into the back of the car. Yep. Um, and the new suspension. The, the suspension sort of made it a, a much better ride. Oh, they make it a world different, don't they? Yeah, with and, with, with, with and without the trailer, so yeah, it's good. Okay, and uh, so your future mods we've already covered, but uh, you, you, we'll go through it again. So what, what are your plans? Obviously the UHF, but what else have you got in mind? Um, yeah, it's just a, it's, it's a matter of prioritising the things that we, that we need. So probably the UHF next, um, and probably down the track some drawers. I'll probably go drifter yep. on the drawers. So yeah, it's hard to argue with drifter. Yeah, yeah. They're expensive, but <laughs> you really do get what you pay for when it comes to gear. Yep. As it happens, that's a drifter table. Yep. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's mainly just the UHF and the and the drawers system at the moment, um, and that's yeah. Yeah, that'll see us through. It's been difficult, like juggling the mods I want to do on the car and juggling the mods I want to do on the trailer. Yep. So you know, I've got to like prioritise which which. Mod gets next preference. Yeah, basically so. just one at a time. Yep, yep. So that's the three best things. Um, what are the three worst things? What did it have on it you got rid of, or you didn't like, or you'd change, or you want to change desperately um, quickly? I mean, you mentioned we didn't cover it earlier. Uh, reversing camera, really. The, the yeah. This doesn't have one. Uh, it didn't come standard with one, so we had one fitted, and uh, as I explained to Kaz, the we live in a battle axe driveway, so a young family's moved in next door, and yep. I have to reverse up into their drive to get out. So um, it was probably a necessity to get a reverse and camera, so I didn't run over kids. Okay. Um, and also, yeah, you know, hooking up to the trailer, it's made a world of difference. Yep. Yep. So, any any bad things that, that you wish that Mazda had done better? 
Well, you're um, quite happy with it. A couple of little things there. The, there's, I think they're called actuators on the air conditioning. Yep. When you turn the vehicle off, these things will still keep ticking away, and um, yeah, it's really annoying. And I rang Mazda the other week, and it was like um, seven hundred dollars to to replace the three actuators in really? there behind the dash. Um, yeah. Well, they're probably gold plated. <laughs> probably, but um, and I changed as we said, I changed the suspension because it was sort of sagging a bit. Yeah. But um, it's been quite good. Yep. So that's uh, basically no bad things really. No, no, it's been a good, been a good truck so far. They're, they're a good thing. Now, if somebody is looking at buying a BT50 second hand, is there anything they should look for specially? I mean, we know the 3.2 is probably the pick of the engines, uh, and yours is an auto. Yep. You, you, did you look at manuals at all, or straight to auto? Um, no, I went straight to auto. Um, it was probably an age thing. You <laughs> know, I just thought I, uh, I'd, I'm pretty keen to go for an auto this time. Yeah. And a few people said to me that, like, if you're doing beach driving, the auto was the better option if, you, if you're going to do a bit of beach oh, driving no as well. Doubt. No yeah. doubt. Yep. So that was one of the main reasons I went with the auto. Okay. Yep. Uh, nothing else we should look for if we're buying a second-hand one? Um, no, no, not known, really. No one faults? No, not, not, that I'm, not that I'm aware of. Um, but you just got to decide what you what you bought, the reason that you're buying it. Yeah. You know, whether it be for touring or bush bashing or whatever. You know, this this like your vehicle set up for touring. Yeah. That's so. Well, that's it. I think people forget that in this world, if you want to do really difficult four wheel driving, you need a different style of truck yeah. to what you do for long distance touring. Yep. And you're all a bit like me. And you want to go doing long distance travel. If you've got to do a hard track to get there, so be it. Yep. Otherwise, you're not, not out rock hopping and bo boring through bog holes. Uh, the the things on the car like the winch the recovery points um, you know some people might see look at the car and think oh you know it's a hardcore four wheel drive but they're basically there so if we do go into a free camp and you know we get stuck in the sand or the mud or something like that we've got the accessories fitted to the yeah. vehicle to get us out so, so what you're saying is you're like me you've got no friends you have to do it yourself pretty much right, yeah okay yeah pretty much yeah that's pretty well like what we are only difference is I've got the two cars and a wife and she'll recover me because I get it wrong. She outdrives me every day of the week. But that's a whole other story for another video. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I'll talk about with these lights and this winch. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, fitted the winch, and as you can see, the remote plugs into here. Um, didn't give it much thought when I put the 9 inch lights on. If I had gone with 7, it probably wouldn't have been a problem. But to fit the remote in, you've got to pull the, this aside oh, so you yeah. can fit it in. or you can put the extension strap in and plug it in to a different spot. But yeah, it makes it a tight fit to put the, oh, yeah. the remote in. But um, I actually picked that hint up watching a, a, someone else on YouTube uh -huh. that had a similar problem. That would be the kind of thing Buck would have talked about. Yep. We all know <laughs> Buck, don't we, guys? Yep. Yeah, it, was, it was a Buck moment, there actually. There you go. So. Well, he's pretty well the king of BT50, as we know. So. Yep, yep. All right, that light's probably covered it. And we're not drinking beers today because it's morning. <laughs> and we're not camping, unfortunately. All right, I think that's pretty well got it. Greg, thanks very yep. much for Thank you. giving thanks. us a look at your truck. Thanks for the invite. And guys, if you'd like to see more of these, uh, give me a call. Put, put some comments down below if you'd like me to film your car. Uh, if you want to see other stuff, make suggestions because I rely on you guys to give me ideas as to what to film for you, what you guys would like to see. Anyway, thanks again for watching the video. Uh, if you're new here, consider subscribing. If you're an old hand, uh, thanks again for taking the time out of your day to watch me dribble on and show you things about other people. And uh, a new thing I'll keep forgetting to mention, guys, if you have subscribed, click the bell for notifications because YouTube's changed things and you won't know I've done something without looking for it. But if you do hit the bell, it'll tell you in an email and you'll know straight away. And then you'll know to delete it. Thanks, guys. Up on one side and put me um, cutting board and make sandwiches or rolls or whatever for lunch. So yeah, it's quite good. It just makes it easy to pull up. Yeah, otherwise you're not out mud half of mud. Yeah. Say that again. <laughs> not out.